Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from reviews of comics new and old, to history, to anecdotes, to really wherever our whims take us. Oh, the Lois Lane getting married playlist is real, and dare I say, beautiful. An adventure in pettiness, outdated societal gender expectations, and just overall zany fun. Today we're diving once more into the madness that is the comic Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane. I can safely say that I didn't know a relationship could be like this. The Lois in these comics, which is largely in its heyday through the 60s, is a stark contrast to the Lois from, say, the 40s. They are different people. The CCA, the Comics Code Authority, did a number on Lois. This outing is going to take us to issue 79 in the year 1967. It also has one of my favorite favorite Superman's girlfriend Lois Lane covers of all time. You know you're excited to be invited to yet another Lois Lane wedding, but before we RSVP, I'm Sasha, and if you're enjoying this content, you know what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Join us on this comic book journey. By the end of this, we'll all be experts in how to woo Lois Lane and marry her away from Superman. Woo her away from Superman, then marry her? It doesn't matter. It doesn't take much. Superman, stop my wedding to Titan Man. I just found out the terrible secret his mask is hiding. Is it that he's actually an executioner? because if that's it, it's not a secret. Or he could be a member at a BDSM fetish club. I see his leather cold shoulder top and glove combo, and may I say, Titan Man, sir, it is a look. I may actually need to commandeer it. Love a cold shoulder top. Love holes and tops for no reason. Now let us enjoy Zero Cares Given Superman. Serves you right for choosing him over me, Lois. Marry him. Stop, it's too much salt. My heart. Look at how scandalized the priest is. He can't even handle it. This story was given to us by writer Richard Hughes with art by Kurt Schaffenberger. And may I just say thank you for the bounty we are about to receive. The one thing Lois Lane wants most is to become the wife of a magnificent mass of muscles named Superman. To me, the phrase magnificent mass of muscles conjures up something horrifying, a sci-fi monstrosity that should not be killed. But that's just me. That's not what Lois sees. I love Lois's dress. There's a seed of an idea in my mind that is doing a Lois Lane lookbook, but only of looks she wears when rejecting or dating people other than Superman. I'll probably end up doing it eventually. These seeds, they won't leave me alone. I can't sleep at night. This opening narrative teaser page is great, and of course gets our marriage proposal out of the way. Er, you are Superman, aren't you? No, just the man who adores you, Lois. I want to take you to my world and marry you. Our story opens on an excited Lois Lane because she has an exclusive interview with Superman and she's got a specific question to ask him. What he thinks of modern girls. Go ahead, Superman. The tape recorder is getting every word. Faster than a speeding bullet. Incapable of thinking up answers on the spot. Clark never answers her, by the way. He's probably too busy wondering if the modern woman likes rooms full of mannequins of herself and also busts. I must briefly draw your attention to Twiggy and the fact that Lois is just of her, only because it will matter. Twiggy is put up as an example of a perfect figure, or at least one that Lois is jealous of, because Lois is meant to be thick, like a bowl of oatmeal, thick with two C's. What a dame. Oh dear, I'm being corrupted by 1967 and modern lingo. Send help. Lois's interview is cut short when a member of the anti-Superman syndicate tries to blast Superman with a ray to send him to another dimension, but it bounces off of him and hits Lois instead. And she's transported to another dimension where things are similar, but not the same. For example, Perry, who normally runs the Daily Planet, now runs a pizza parlor. And it's called Perry's Pizza Parlor. Well, thank goodness the high level of alliteration is still intact in this dimension. All the women look like Twiggy and they mock her, but then there's a panel of their men looking back at Lois because they're like va va voom, their anacondas do. She's set upon by the police after she doesn't have an ID card to identify herself, and she misidentifies them as children rather than little people, and so she shoves one of them and gets herself arrested. And that policeman is offended, by the way. He lectures her on intolerance while she's there in her cell that has a poster of the crime she committed. I really want that poster. This, this is the obscure merch I want, DC. Where's my repent for your crimes Lois Lane poster? Lois looks outside and hones right in on the blonde Superman lookalike doing push-ups in the exercise yard. Strange how he reminds me of Superman. If only he could rescue me. Suddenly he's at her window. The look on his face terrifies me, but not Lois. He bends the bars and comes in, saying that he's from a nearby planet, and that he allowed himself to be captured for research purposes. He is the most powerful man in the universe. Titan Man. It has a very different impact when you rip your shirt off and that costume is underneath. I love it. I saw you from the courtyard and my super telepathic power revealed your name, Lois Lane. Your name has eight letters, the same as mine. Eight, the most important number in my life. Oh, so, so many things. The costume and its homoerotic vibes. The shallowness of attraction paralleling Superman where his thing is that all the loves of his life have two L's in their name. For Titan Man, it's that eight 
Eight is so important. He also has creepy telepathy powers that Lois Lane opts to ignore instead opting for this response. That's a real gone coincidence. Eight's always been my lucky number. Has it been Lois? Has it actually? Remember to tell the truth now. He is telepathic. He'll know if you're lying. My heart told me there was a bond between us. There is such a thing as love at first sight. Can't you feel it? Yes, Lois experiences love at first sight with many men. And there's nothing wrong with that. Only by 1960s mores and morality, that means that she has to marry all of them instantly. Save those impure thoughts for marriage, thank you very much. She's just thirsty. She's very thirsty. Someone get Lois a drink. I can't live without you. Come with me to my planet as my wife. What's happening to me? I've always been in love with Superman, yet now I can hardly recall what he looks like. I can only think of Titan Man. I'd like to laugh at this. You know I really would. But they did just reveal that Titan Man is telepathic. So this all reeks of manipulation. Is he forcing attraction on her? Is he making her forget Superman? You open this door, issue 79. Now I have to think about it. You started it. They go off planet and he further reveals the extent of his telepathy by answering a question she was just thinking about. I can hear you telepathically, Lois, and I'm answering you in the same way. On my world, this hood is how I hide my real identity. On his world, his people are thrilled that he's marrying Lois Lane. Every time I see his costume, it just brings me more and more joy. Before we begin the ceremony, darling, meet your bridesmaids. Is he suppressing her feelings or is marrying someone hot enough to make Lois forget about the fact that she's never gonna see her family or friends or experience birth customs again? Also, this story is about to jump off the rails. Yes, about to. It hasn't done it yet. Oh, how lovely they are. But tell me, why are they numbered that way from one to seven? Because those are my other wives, of course. Seven of them, and you're going to be number eight. This is scary. That's why I used horror music. He can read her mind. He knows this isn't what she was expecting. He full on tricked her because her name has eight letters and his next wife has to have eight letters in her name because eight's the most important number. He's unstable. How lucky I was to meet you. The girl with eight letters in her name, the same as I. The girl whose lucky number is eight. The girl fate has chosen to be my number eight wife. <gasps> I don't want to be his eighth wife. I want to be his number one and only wife. Yes, Lois, never change. The only problem here is that you won't be his first wife. That's truly the only thing that has gone awry. When Lois gets upset because she doesn't want to see him every eighth day and dance every eighth dance, yes, these are all things that he's saying will happen, he goes full evil immoral telepath on her. Now, now, you're just excited. My tranquilizer ray will calm you down while the ceremony proceeds. Lois has no will to do anything except regret that she ever stopped loving Superman. If only he were there to help. And suddenly, impossibly, he is, arriving just in time for the speak now or forever hold your peace part. Because Superman has one power above all else, and that's dramatic timing. And he's even better when he shows up than he was on the cover. You're just in time, Superman. Don't let Titan Man force me to marry him. Now that I know the dark secret he kept from me, I despise him. See, Lois, this is what happens when you ask zero questions. The only question she ever even thought to ask him was, oh, why is he putting that mask on? Hi, Titan Man. What's your name? Is there an atmosphere on your planet? Can I breathe the air? Are you immortal? Do you want kids? Do you happen to have seven other wives? Superman, however, could not care less. Are you kidding? I'll be happy to have you married and out of my hair. Say your I do is pretty, Lois. Wow. Now this is supposed to be our cue that something is wrong. Well, more seriously wrong than everything else that has happened so far. But ask yourself, is this really that far off from how Superman in these stories normally treats her? Is it? Is it really? No, it's not. What's off is that this is all a dream. She was knocked unconscious when the ray hit her, and she realizes that the dream was manifesting some of her subconscious concerns, hence why the world was full of women who looked like Twiggy making fun of her. This raises so many concerns and red flags for me. Look at what pining after Superman is doing to Lois emotionally. She is not okay. That Superman at the wedding was her perception and fear of what he thinks of her and her pursuit of him. Yet Titan Man is her fear that if she meets someone who seems perfect, there'll be something wrong with them because they aren't Superman. I don't know if that much depth was intended, but when you introduce a plot element that is that her subconscious fears are projecting into the world that she is dreaming about, you've opened up that door for me. You've opened yourself up to all kinds of interpretations. Like, is her being arrested like that because she feels out of place in the world? This story did not go where I was expecting it to in oh so many ways. The story does end with her affirming that she is still pining after Superman, who still never answered what he thinks about modern woman. 
Don't think I don't see you, Clark. Well, we'll always have Titan Man's costume. This story is really intriguing if you want to do a bit of a deep dive into Lois's emotional state. And if you don't, it's an off-the-rails adventure full of questionable morality and hilarious characterizations, and some little jabs at canon Superman. Eight is the most important number in my life. This one stuck with me. I can laugh at parts of it, ponder other parts far too deeply. It made me want to go online to look for some nice cold shoulder sweaters. And I found some. I also found some shirts with stupid holes in them that I also picked up. Get excited to see those. What more could I ask for? But those are just my thoughts. I want to hear yours. Are you as worried about Lois as I am? Did you love Titan Man's costume? What do you think this unconscious dream world says about Lois's hopes and dreams? Share all of your thoughts down below. And while you're down there, please do all the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking some time out of your day to spend it discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.